Hello, this is Dr. Jack Jackson. In this video, we will be seeing how ancient Egyptians represented natural numbers. As we discussed in the previous videos, the foundation of understanding any numeration system is understanding how they grouped objects. The ancient Egyptians used a grouping in groups of 10 as the basis of their numeration system presumably because this is the same as the number of fingers that we have. You will find groups of 10 familiar since it, we use it as part of our modern number, number system. Anytime 10 of one symbol are present, the group is replaced by one of the next larger symbol. Notice that this is an additive system so that the values of the respective symbols are simply added together to get the value of the numeral. This is not a place value system like our system. For example, the heel bone symbol always represents uh, this many objects here, 10 in our modern numerals, regardless of its position. Since it's not a place value system, it's not really correct to say it is a base 10 system, even though the groupings are certainly in groups of 10. So this is neither positional nor place value. And here's an example. Two scrolls, three heel bones, and four of the, fi of the uh, fingers. Uh, not the fingers, but the staffs, excuse me. Rep would be uh, four units, three tens, and two hundreds, or 234. Two groups of 100 three groups of 10 and four individual items, regardless of how the symbols are arranged. So here are the six Egyptian numerical hieroglyphs as pictures. This is part of their hieroglyphic uh, language or writing. And notice that each symbol represents a power of 10, and each is equivalent to a group of 10 of the next symbols. So 10 of these staffs makes one heel bone, 10 heel bones makes a scroll, 10 scrolls makes a finger, and so forth. Here they're actually presented as uh, little pictures. Okay, so in my PowerPoint, these are all just separate pictures. Okay, so this is a group of one. A heel bone is 10 singles, so that's 10 in our numbers. A scroll is 10 heel bones, or 100 individual items. A finger is 10 groups of 100, 10 scrolls, which is 1,000 in our items. A lotus flower here is 10,000, or 10 uh, fingers, right? 10 lotus flowers would be a polywog, tadpole, uh, 100,000 individuals are 10 lotus flowers. And the astonished man here represents 1 million, okay, which would be 10 polywogs. Now, in the last uh, slide, we had the symbols there as pictures. In this slide, you can see them uh, in a particular font. This is a uh, uh, N-A-H-K-T, Nacht font. I got this from this uh, website right here that you can see listed. Uh, I did buy that font. I think it was like a like dollar ninety nine, And I put that on my computer. And then in that font, uh, I can get the vertical staff by just typing a one, type a two, it gets the heel bone, a three is this and so forth, okay? You can see the numbers to type. This font has a lot of other hieroglyphics, not just these number ones, but I'm just using it for the number ones. And of course, there's a vertical description of the hieroglyph. Uh, as I've said, that's a vertical staff. That's supposed to represent a heel bone, a scroll, a lotus flower, a pointing finger, a polywog, an astonished man. Okay. And of course, here's the equivalent modern Hindu Arabic numeral for that.
So here we take a certain number of blocks and represent them in Egyptian numerals. The idea here is to physically arrange their blocks. There are There are heel bone, heel bone, heel bone, staff, 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 staff. Uh, three heel bones and four staffs worth of blocks here. Well, what does that mean? Well, when you, when you represent something in a numeral, any kind of numeral, what you're really doing is taking that number of individual blocks and grouping them together in some way. In Egyptian numerals, we want to group in groups of 10. So if you see, I've kind of taken this and drawn some lines here so that there's a group of 10 there. That's a heel bone for that group. Here's another group of 10, heel bone for that group. Another group of 10, there's another heel bone. And these five are individuals, so there's our five individuals. So this representation, this grouping down here, really is what's going on when we're dealing with Egyptian numerals. All right, let's see if you can do something now. Uh, now you try converting some numerals on your own. Convert each of the following three Egyptian numerals to modern Hindu Arabic numerals. Press pause and work on this on your own. Press play to continue on to check your answer. Press pause now. Okay, now we're back. And here are the answers. Notice that the last one is a picture of an actual Egyptian numeral carved in stone. So if we look here, regardless of where they're placed, those four staves makes four individual items. That's going to be four in our first digit or on the right in Hindu Arabic numerals. Here we have four heel bones. So that's a four in the tens place because each one of those heel bones represents a group of ten, which is what's represented by this second place in our place value system. Here we have two scrolls. Each one of those represents a hundred. So we have two hundreds. That's represented by two in the third place over. And the fourth place over from the right is the thousands place. And each one of these lowest uh, flowers represents a thousand. We have three of those. So in our numerals, this would be 3,244. Similarly, we have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, seven. Seven of those uh, staffs. So that's a seven in the units. We have three heel bones. So that's a three in the, in the 10 spot there. Two and the hundreds there, two scrolls, a lotus flower, that's one, and two fingers is two in the tens thousand spot. Here we have three lotus flowers, three um, scrolls, three heel bones, no units. So no units in our place value system puts a zero there, a three, three, and three in the tens, hundreds, and thousands spot. You might notice that the last one is an actual picture of some actual uh, Egyptian numeral, of an Egyptian numeral carved in stone. All right, now let's reverse it. Convert each of the following Hindu Arabic numerals to Egyptian numerals. Work it on your own. Press pause now. Here are the solutions. Uh, the first are just the first. I've written them two different ways. The first one is I've just uh, typed them in using that that special font that we talked about, which is pretty easy to do, and it just comes around horizontally. Uh, but the Egyptians didn't always write them horizontally. Sometimes they uh, group together different ways, and so this might be another way we get it. The second representation I actually got uh, from a converter that I found online at the uh, the website you can see down here math tool math dot tools and um, and so we get this so remember this position this notation is not positional it's only additive so the position symbols is really irrelevant although I think they generally place higher value symbols on the left and proceeded lower value symbols on the right so let's just take a look at these answers real fast. This would be 300s, 210s, and 7 ones, which is what our number 327 means. So that would be three scrolls, two heel bones, and then seven individual staves.
Okay, this next one's a lot bigger. One million, so that's going to be one astonished man. Four in the hundred thousands, so that's going to be four polywogs. Uh, two in the ten thousands, so that's two of the fingers. Five in the thousands, so that's going to be five of these lotus flowers. Six of the scrolls for hundreds, six hundreds. Arranged a little differently here. Eight of the um, heel bones, which you can see here, and arranged a different way here. And just one of the vertical staffs. 9,987,848 is going to be nine astonished men, nine polywogs, eight fingers, seven lotus flowers, eight scrolls, four, uh, I think I've got one too many there, four uh, uh, heel bones and eight units. Okay, I think I fixed it, and uh, hopefully I counted those correctly. And you can see it here as produced by math tools. What are some disadvantages of this numeration system compared to our own modern system? Again, press pause and create your own answer before continuing. So at least two things I can think of that are, uh, that are uh, bad. Um, number one, well, I guess there's a, maybe a third one is that the symbols are a little bit harder to write. Uh, but more concept-wise, it can require a large number of repeated symbols for a relatively small number. For example, let's look back at the previous slide and look at how many of the symbols it took. You, know, you could have up to nine of the same symbol uh, before we uh, regroup. Okay. So that's a problem, but there's actually a, a bigger problem. There are a finite number of symbols or hieroglyphs. So there's really no way to effectively write an arbitrarily large number. For in other words, with only these seven symbols, we don't have a way to write 10, 000, 10 million other than 10 astonished men. Okay, 100 million would require 1,000 astonished men. Even if we create another symbol for 10,000, we still have the same problem for the next group of 10. The conversion site linked on the previous slide just ignores any digits over the millions place. So it really only goes up to 9,999,999. The most basic operation with natural numbers is addition. What is the sum of the following two numbers and Egyptian numerals? Now be sure here not to convert to modern numerals, but rather think like an Egyptian. Note that we are using the modern notations for addition and equality, which really came much later. Press pause and work this one out on yourself. Okay, we can think of each natural number as representing a set of objects such as blocks. How we represent the number of blocks in Egyptian numerals is all about grouping them in groups of 10. And we're, of course, representing that with some uh, hieroglyph, some symbol. Adding two numbers is simply just putting all the blocks together and then regrouping them to represent the sum. Now, we don't want to break apart the existing groups if we don't have to. In this case, we can start by just rearranging the symbols from each add-in together and placing the same symbols together. Next, we look to see if we have a group of 10 of one of the same symbol. If so, then we replace that group with one of the next higher symbol. This is done three times in this problem as indicated by the colors. The 10 blue heel bones here, some of which came from the first one and some from the second one, are grouped together to become the one 
scroll here. And the 10 red scrolls here are regrouped to become the one red lotus flower here. And the 10 green lotus flowers here, which came from four from here and six from here, are regrouped to become the one green finger. In the end, this is the number here, green finger, lotus flower, scroll, heel bone, staff, 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 staff. Once we have addition, it should be natural to ask if we can reverse the process. This lens leads to the operation of subtraction. What's the difference of the following two, uh, two numbers? Again, stay in Egyptian numerals, numerals throughout. Work this one on your own. Press pause now. Okay, let's see how you did. The key to subtraction is canceling out like groups. Each of the red symbols from the second number is canceled out with the matching red symbol from the first number. The remaining black symbols represents the difference, the answer. So we cancel out two staff, staffs out of the first one, cancel the two staffs here, leaving these two staffs. The three heel bones cancel with those three heel bones, leaving these remaining um, five heel bones. Three of the of these scrolls here are canceled out by the three scrolls here, leaving only these two scrolls. And we only have these two lotus flowers remaining because these four lotus flowers are canceled with those four. Now work this one out. Work this one on your own. Press pause now. Notice that the first number is again larger than the second number, so the answer is a positive number. Uh, we don't have any problem canceling out the two single items. These two will end up canceling with those two, leaving two here. However, we have a problem when we get to the heel bones. Here we have three heel bones, but only one here. There's not a way to cancel all of these, not enough over here to cancel out. And this leads us to what we have to do uh, is that we break apart one of the larger symbols into 10 of the next smallest symbol. So we replace this scroll with 10 heel bones. And we end up having to do the same thing for one of the lotus flowers. We take, because there's, uh, there's uh, not enough uh, scrolls over here to cancel this one out. In fact, that once that green one's gone, there's only one here and there's three here. So we take the lotus flower and replace it by 10 scrolls. Now there's enough to cancel out. Right here we have four staffs. Take away two staffs, there's two left. Here we cancel out three of these. And one, two, three leaves us eight, eight here of the heel bones. And then three of these scrolls cancel three of these scrolls. Yep, that leaves us eight there. And the four lotus flowers out of this should only leave one lotus flower here. Let's fix that. There we go. So we will return to Egyptian numerals and other and some other operations, like talk a little bit about how Egyptians multiply and divide and maybe even look at some Egyptian fractions at a later time. At this point, we just wanted to get a basic idea of how natural numbers work with Egyptian numerals. And for the next video, let's take a look at natural numbers in Roman numerals.